So guys, today we are going to be doing the long anticipated and long awaited uh, review on my Glock 19. And before we get into this any further guys, as always, please do not forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe so you can see more awesome Alaskan content like this. Now let's jump into this. So guys, like I said, today we are going to be doing a review on my Glock 19. And I've had this little gun for a few months now, ever since last September, I actually have had this gun and have been using it quite extensively, whether it's at the range or just carrying it in general. This is the gun that I have been using a lot. Now, this one in particular is a little bit different. Of course, it is a Gen 4 Glock 19, but this is an, unlike your standard, just black Glocks. This one is made in the USA and is actually from factory, Cerakoted, and this one is Cerakoted particularly in the Magpul Flat Dark Earth. And I wanted to get that because at the time the Glock 19X didn't really exist. And in fact, I really didn't even regret not getting the Glock 19X because I really do like this. But we'll get into the Gen 5, the Gen 4, the Gen 5 versus Gen 4 debate and the Glock 19X debate in a little bit here. But overall, I just really wanted to talk about my impressions of carrying, using, having this gun for the past about six, seven months. So anyways, and now let's really get Get into that now also i'm gonna be rolling in a ton of extra footage uh, from carrying the gun uh, to shooting the gun just in general a ton of extra footage for this gun because i really with gun reviews because these are such expensive and important pieces of life tool or edc toolage uh, i really feel it's important to make sure that you guys accurately see this gun in use that you guys see it in carry and firing and just overall get really accustomed to what this gun looks like and performs like. So as far as it goes, this gun has performed really well for me. I have been, I will say, a Glock fan for a long time. Most of you uh, guys who are, who are, who have been subscribed to the channel for a little while know that I have a Glock 21 that I've carried and used a lot for years and years and years. So I am no new fan, or no, yeah, new, new <laughs> no new fan to the Glock handguns in general but I really do love the 19 and in fact what really spurred me to get a 19 was that I shot my friend's 19 and I really enjoyed just everything about it how it fit perfectly in my hand personally this gun when I hold it like this it fits perfectly in my hand or even when I hold it one-handed like this it fits perfectly in my hands no issues and overall it feels really good to hold and secondly, the operations are just what I like in a Glock. Uh, it's really standard Glock. I haven't done any real modifications to this gun because in all honesty, I just don't feel like I really need to. I learn the system of Glock. I've already learned the system through the Glock 21. So I'm already really familiar with the Glock uh, performance and how it works. So <clears throat> I really didn't feel any needs to change about the only modification that I have really made about this gun is just, and it's not even a true real modification because these come with the clocks themselves, is it comes with a bunch of different back straps. And what I did was I cut off this uh, lower part of the back strap so that all the that was left was just the beaver tail. And the only reason I did that was because, uh, and if the Glock can't do it, it's not a huge deal for me, but I do actually like the beaver tail that is on the Glock more than just having no beaver tail at all, or at least this beaver tail extension. I actually got really used to shooting with a beaver tail. However, I didn't like the hump extension that it added. So I really like the standard hump, but the increased beaver tail. So I just took one of the beaver tail uh, back straps and just chopped it off so that I didn't have to live with the extra hump because the Glock humpiness is already very much there. So I don't necessarily want this increased in humpiness, but I did really want to have <coughs> an extra beaver tail add-on so that I could choke up just a little bit higher on the handgun and so it helped me really raise if you guys can hopefully see there I'm not sure how well but you guys can see hopefully this will be the best view I like to hold my gun up really high like this so I like to be really close to the bore on my Glock when I shoot it and it helps me get faster follow-up shots so uh, that's why I primarily went for the beaver tail edition so now jumping right back into it uh, with this gun and my overall thoughts. So that was the only real modification I made to the gun. Uh, and like I said, I do like that. I do have a video 
on making this a DIY beaver tail edition. I think that that was a really important thing for me and uh, helped me get faster follow-up shots because I was able to really get choke up higher on the handgun. And as you guys can hopefully see here, like how my grip is really high up on the handgun. That allows me to follow up with shots faster and faster. So other than that, there's no modifications. I didn't really do anything to the sights. I know a lot of people are like, oh, the Glock sights suck. Oh, the Glock sights are this, that, and this, and that. And you know, the polymer, I kind of find it funny when a lot of people <laughs> diss the polymer sights because they're saying that polymer is trash. I actually heard it in one video that this guy was like, polymer sights, or he was just saying like polymer in general sucks. And, you know, it makes like, he actually says swear word. I don't really swear around here, but he said that polymer was a really bad word. Has I just found it really funny because it's like, he said that as he was holding a polymer framed handgun. And you got to realize that most of this handgun, like the frame, the trigger, the slide or the mag release, uh, you know, there's a lot of pieces to this gun that are actually polymer. So when you say that polymer sucks, you're saying that like most of your handgun sucks. So I kind of found that funny. And honestly, for me, in my opinion, obviously polymer is not as strong as steel, but if they, if Glock is, feels comfortable enough to make, you know, the frame, the trigger, the mag release, so many of these different things, the guide rod, you know, if they feel like it's strong enough to make all these different components, then I feel, in my opinion, that these sights are definitely strong enough. And as for racking the sights off your belt or something like that, I'm actually gonna roll in footage of me doing that. With these polymer sights, I have had no issues uh, running it off my belt. And I will say, if your belt is made out of steel, I probably would upgrade to steel sights because that is kind of the only thing that if you do rack this off of repeatedly, if you rack this off of like steel or if you rack this off of some type of metal, it may rip up the sights. But if you're doing this like on a leather belt like this, you know, like you're doing that kind of thing off of a leather belt, it's not going to do anything. In fact, the polymer is going to do more damage to the belt than the belt to the polymer sights. So I'm really not that concerned. And I have done drills where you know, I'll fire and then rack it off the, uh, rack the uh, rear sights off my belt like that. And I've done it just fine. These these work adequately. They may not be the best. They don't have necessarily a 90 degree shelf, but they aren't that tapered. So when you do grab it, you can grab it pretty well like that. So I really don't have any issues with the sights or the, the polymer being too weak. So other than that, uh, as far as experience goes with this gun, shooting has been an absolute joy. I do have to say I'm a little bit um, kind of untraditional in the way that I shoot or like in my shooting kind of this where I come from 45 ACP. So I started out on a Glock 21 really. And so that's where most of my experience <laughs> lies. So shooting a nine mil like this is actually a really fun and really easy gun to shoot. And or follow up shots are really fast, really easy. And overall, I really do enjoy the nine by 19. Uh, round in general and I really love that it's in, uh, inexpensive and affordable to go and practice and target practice with and it's also really easy to shoot round. So other than that I will say one thing I did notice because like I said I have a friend that has a Glock 19 and his was an Austria made 19 and this is a USA made 19 and this is of course an empty gun and one thing I will notice or something I did notice from the get-go and I even have an Austria made 21 and I noticed it between my Austria made 21 and this 19 is that the trigger this is a USA made 19 for those who are wondering the trigger is very different and in fact you'll notice if you shoot any of the newer Glocks um, you'll notice that the trigger is a lot better in the earlier Gen 3s and Austria made Gen 4s from what I can tell it, the trigger is really squishy and it's not very nice and not to say that this trigger is you know astounding or that much better it has about the same breaking poundage but i noticed that this trigger is a lot more crisp so even just pulling it it does not feel gummy at all it feels really crisp and of course the reset on the glock is always great but 
it feels like a really crisp release. And so I have to say part of what I do actually like about these USA made newer Glocks is they have really clean triggers. It's still a heavy kind of more combat like trigger. So you're still talking in the range of like five, six, seven pounds for trigger pull. But if you get accustomed to it, it's not that bad. And most especially since they've removed a lot of the gumminess out of the trigger. And so that when you, the take up is right there, but after that take up, it's very crisp, very hard pull, and it's really not that gummy at all. So honestly, I really have to say what they did to these newer Glock, uh, newer Gen 4 USA made Glock triggers is really good. So I will give Glock credit there. So anyways, uh, as far as additions go, of course this is a Glock, so you can get tons of additions for this thing. I have just a handful of different holsters here. Uh, I've ran three primary holsters with this gun. I've ran the DeSantis Scorpion 2, which was a great holster, but it really wasn't that comfortable. My top two are one, this uh, this is by N82 squared, um, or sorry, N82 squared. Uh, this is by N82 Tactical, and this is what they call the Ambassador. And I really like this holster. I have to say that this is probably uh, a one of my, like, it's the top two holsters, of course, but it is one of my favorites because it has really tight retention. It's very comfortable to carry it. You guys can see that this is what it looks like. It's obviously an inside the waistband holster. I've, I'm going to be rolling in some pictures of me actually wearing this, but this is one of my favorite holsters for it. It carries the gun really well, and going to inside the waistband carryability of the 19, I find it to be just fine. It really, for me, like... For me, this is a pretty small gun. It's not super small, but it does conceal very well on my body. Granted, I am a larger framed person, so I, I don't really have that part of a time really like being able to carry this thing or even conceal it if I wanted to. Uh, this works very well for what I want to do most of the time or sometimes, and it also has a very tight retention. So I'm really not worried about the Glock coming out, falling out, and of course the leather on the back is very comfortable. So other than that, the one that I actually see the most carry time, and it's actually on me, I'll rotate so you guys can hopefully see this. This is the um, BCA by Bravo Concealment. And this is my go-to holster because it's outside the waistband, which is generally how I carry. So this one works very well. And like I said, it's my go-to holster. It is the one I have the most trading with and that I really love. Now I do want to get to the other thing, which is kind of sort of a modification because technically most stock locks are not going to look this way. And that is how the Cerakote is handling up or handling, handling up, living up to or handling itself and just how its overall durability is. And I will say the Cerakote is definitely, uh, it's about as tough, I would say, as the normal coating. Uh, this gun has seen a lot of use, a lot of abuse, and I've honestly played with it a lot in different drills where I've thrown it in the mud, I've thrown it in the snow, I've thrown it just down on the ground, picked it up, fired a couple rounds, threw it back on the ground. So this gun has not seen it or this gun has not been a safe queen. It's not been treated easily. And for that, it has a lot of holster wear. So on these corners especially, and I'll do some up close uh, kind of video of this handgun so you guys can see the wear on it. But this gun certainly has seen its fair share of wear. But overall, I will say uh, a little bit better on the metal than the plastic or the polymer itself. But the for the most part, this, uh, over the past six months, this uh, flat dark earth has held up very well and done really pretty good. And I mean, it obviously is a little bit harder to see wear on a black gun as opposed to a tan gun, where it's really easy to start to see the metal showing uh, from a tan gun than it is a black gun. And obviously, uh, when these guns are not Cerakoted, their frames are just black. So you'll see black kind of showing through where the uh, Cerakote has rubbed off. And Primarily, I will say most of the Cerakote has worn off from holster wear, and that's because I use always Kydex holsters. So Kydex is another plastic, so every time it goes in and out of its holster, it wears on the paint. So anyways, uh, that's basically all I have to say about the Glock 19, and that's my review on it. I will say it's been a great performer and a great shooter, and as always, guys, God bless, and I'm out.